Welcome. Again, happy Halloween. This is Professor Gerda Pujol here um, at the University of Central Florida and welcome to Legal and Ethical Environment of Business. Let's go ahead and move on to part two of the litigation process. Um, civil litigation is what we're focusing on here and um, that is the discovery process. That is the phase of litigation known as discovery. We just talked about the pleading stage which consists of a complaint and then an answer to the complaint or more likely a motion to dismiss before the answer is brought by the defendant. Now let's talk about discovery. One of the um, most important things you need to know about modern litigation, modern civil litigation is that um, there's the, the trial does not happen right away. Once the pleading phase is over, once you have a complaint and a motion to dismiss, either dismissing the case entirely or partly, um, by the way, of course, if the motion to dismiss dismisses the case entirely, that's the end of the matter. The case is done. Um, if there's no motion to dismiss or the motion to dismiss is simply granted in part, then we go on to the discovery phase. And what happens here is most, um, when we talk about civil litigation, a big part of that really is discovery. And discovery simply means literally where the plaintiff and the defendant both sides to the case get to discover, obtain evidence from the other side. And in fact, under our um, modern litigation rules, which came into effect in the 1930s, um, the parties are required to discover information before they go to trial and to exchange relevant information about the case with each other before they go to trial. The idea here is that under the modern rules, we don't want any surprises at trial. Uh, we want the parties to uh, be fully informed before they go to trial. One idea behind this is that if the parties um, know um, not only how strong their case is, but how strong the other party's cases or the other party's defenses are, um, then perhaps they'll be in a better position to um, settle the case. Well, be that as it may, um, what I want to focus on here is the two most important aspects of discovery. There's actually a multiple tools available to the parties to obtain uh, relevant information. But I hear I just wanna focus on the most important ones. There's two important tools. One consists of depositions. And one of the, um, and by the way, if you've seen now the social network, you see how that movie fast forwards, right? To the deposition scenes, right? As the parties are getting ready for their trial. And those deposition scenes are pretty dramatic, right? A lot of uh, um, facts are being discovered during those depositions. And what a deposition simply is, is when the party, the attorney taking the deposition of a witness or a party um, is obtaining oral testimony, oral evidence um, about the case. And the thing about depositions is that a party taking a deposition, whether it be the plaintiff or the defendant, they are entitled to take the deposition, not only of the parties in the case, but of any witness even if they're not named in the complaint, um, any witness with any potential relevant information or information designed to uncover relevant information about the case. So discovery is very, very broad and depositions are a very important part of that process. What happens is when a deposition is taken, um, there will be a transcript of that deposition. A court reporter will be present preparing a transcript and that transcript now becomes evidence that can be used at trial if the case goes to trial. Now, I will tell you about depositions. Um, they are somewhat informal because they do not occur in a courtroom. They occur usually in a lawyer's office or in a lawyer's conference room, a law firm conference room. Uh, usually the party taking the deposition has to make uh, some uh, space available um, for the um, deponent and for the court reporter. And the party taking the deposition has to bear that expense of the court reporter. Um, both, usually both the plaintiff and the defendant will want to take depositions um, of, of, of witnesses and of the uh, main parties in the case. So depositions are a very important discovery tool. And sometimes, by the way, I will tell you from personal experience, scheduling a deposition can be a very difficult issue. Um, and you'll sometimes see in the news in high profile cases, parties trying to postpone the, having their deposition taken, but they are required by law. Um, you know, if you are a named party or a witness with relevant information to a case, 
um, your deposition can be taken. Now, the other important discovery tool is called production of documents and things or a request for production of documents and things to um, provide you the full title. Now, the request for production of documents or things can only be sent to a party, a named party in a case. If you'd like documents or um, things from a, um, a witness, a non-party to the case, there you'll have to get the court's uh, authorization for that. However, what's important about the request for production of documents, um, or it can be physical evidence, any, any, anything that might be relevant to a case, is that it does include emails and text messages and photographs. And so you have to be, I have to tell you, um, every time you send an email, you really have to be careful. Uh, this is really probably one of the best pieces of practical advice you'll get from this course. When you send an email, you have to imagine yourself, what if a lawyer um, uh, of a party suing me or suing my company were to look at that email? Because that can be evidence in a case. And um, uh, if you take a look at your UCF email, for example, you'll notice at the bottom there's this uh, message that it'll be retained for seven years. And the idea is that even when a party hasn't been sued yet, you do have an obligation to preserve evidence. And um, this is uh, very important. Um, if you saw the 60 Minutes interview of Mark Zuckerberg um, that I included in Module 4, you'll notice, for example, even his text messages uh, were discovered as part of that case. And so um, uh, this is often referred to as e-discovery or electronic discovery. The point is that the rules are very broad. Any type of information that's relevant to the case or designed to uncover relevant information about the case can be discovered, and that includes electronic records. Now, when we talk about things about, um, for example, more sensitive information like trade secrets or medical records, um, they're... Those are generally discoverable if they're relevant to the case. However, um, a party who is concerned about the disclosure of such information may go to the court, may go to the judge, and request a court order keeping that information under seal or maybe even prohibiting the sharing of that information on the grounds that it's not that relevant to the case. Um, so that's something decided usually on a case-by-case -case basis. The point here that I really want to emphasize, the overall point, is that discovery, when you're taking depositions of multiple witnesses and sending out requests for production of documents and getting you know voluminous documents in return, all relevant emails, all relevant text messages, it can take a lot of expense and time to produce those documents and to take those depositions. And um, of course, it's gonna take a lot of time and uh, manpower to review the documents and find out what the relevant information in those documents are. This is why, and I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know as a practical matter, this is why civil litigation is so expensive. And as I'll talk uh, soon in a uh, next video, why we have methods of alternate dispute resolution. All right, um, so far we've talked about the pleading stage when the plaintiff files a complaint. We've talked about the discovery uh, phase. Next, I'll talk about the trial and I'll talk about alternate methods of dispute resolution. All right. Uh, thank you for your attention. Have a great day and go Knights.